shielding and penetration, diamagnetism and paramagnetism. This video is largely designed to introduce you to some terminology that we're going to be using moving forward. Covering these separately will hopefully ensure that they get the attention that they deserve and don't get lost in the bigger concepts in the videos where we will use them. We saw this picture as one of our representations of S orbitals. Now I want to draw your attention to a different aspect of it. The X axis is the distance from the nucleus. Notice how the 1S orbital has significantly more of its density. closer to the nucleus than the 2s orbital. And the 2s orbital has it closer to the nucleus than the 3s orbital. The fact that the 1s is closer to the nucleus than the 2s and 3s means that it is more penetrating. The more penetrating that something is, the closer it is to the nucleus. Hopefully this squares with your understanding of the word. If we use a tool to penetrate the surface of the earth, the deeper that tool goes, the more penetrating it is. Our second term of the day is shielding. Think about how we use this word in our current understanding of the word shield. If you are a knight, you would put a shield between you and a sword to shield you from the sword. If a pan is very hot, you might use a hot pad to shield you from the heat of the pan. Each time you're putting something between you and the thing that you're protecting yourself from. Shielding, when we discuss orbitals, is the same basic idea. Because the nucleus is positively charged, the electrons are attracted to the nucleus. However, the more penetrating orbitals, or the orbitals which are closer to the nucleus, will shield the outside orbitals, since those inside orbitals are also negatively charged. So if we look at our three orbitals here, the 1s orbital shields the 2s and 3s because it is more penetrating. The 2s shields the 3s because it is more penetrating. I want to introduce another set of terminology that we're going to need moving into electron configurations. You'll learn to do the configurations in another video, um, but I just find that if we talk about this in that video, which is very long, it gets a little bit lost. Atoms that have unpaired electrons have different properties than those which have paired electrons, all paired electrons, right? So even just one unpaired electron gives it these extra properties. We define those with unpaired electrons as paramagnetic. And yes, that's an annoying name. It's it, the pair and the para are different, right? Like the spelling's different. You can see this is P-A-I-R, this is P-A-R-A. -A. They come from different things. Um, but yeah, you have to remember that. So those with only paired electrons, so every single electron has a pair, are called diamagnetic. Now, I want you to notice something, and I picked carbon very specifically as my example here, is that you can't tell whether something is paramagnetic or diamagnetic just based on whether it has an even or odd number of electrons, okay? Both carbon and neon have an even number of electrons, right? including in their valence shell. Carbon has four electrons in its valence shell. It has six electrons total. But because of the rules of filling going across the orbitals first rather than doubling up first, carbon is going to have two unpaired electrons, right? And so you have to always make sure when you're deciding whether something is paramagnetic or diamagnetic that you actually look at how the electrons are configured and arranged within the atom. You don't know how to do that quite yet um, unless you're reviewing this video at a later time, but hopefully in the next videos you can kind of keep this in mind um, as you go along and then come revisit this one uh, after you've watched some more too. This is a good review video as well as a good preemptory video. So in this video we cover four definitions to help you with the upcoming sections on periodic trends and electron configurations. Uh, again, just make a mental note to come back and revisit this video again after. You really need this both before and after. And to make sure that you remember this terminology when you're doing your other problems.